programme features live coverage of an African safari and may include animal kills and carcasses. Viewer discretion is advised. It appears as if the clouds are moving in this afternoon. It's a nice, cool afternoon, and this is Safari Live. Ready. Standing by. Good afternoon everybody and welcome to Safari Live. My name is Byron and on camera with me is Fergus this afternoon. See how quickly I got to that termite mound. I had to run but I um, thought let's try something different. Have a little stand on the termite mound and look around. Now on the other vehicle this afternoon is Tristan and then we've got um, Batman with him or Craig as he's otherwise known as and the ladies in the final control. Now don't forget everyone, we're completely live, so send us your questions or your comments to hashtag Safari Live and we'll gladly get to them. It's a nice cool afternoon, uh, not too bad, about 23 degrees Celsius, about 74 degrees Fahrenheit. I'll jump back into the vehicle now. <laughs> I bet you didn't think I could get all the way over there that quickly. Hey Fergus? Hey, eh? moving really quickly. <laughs> so, this afternoon, we're going to, I'm going to stick to my plan from this morning, and those of you who are only joining us for our sunset safari, we, um, we managed to find some lions this morning, the Unkuhuma Pride. Now, Tristan is going to go and look for them again. Hopefully, we get to find them this afternoon, and they didn't move too far, although it has been a cool afternoon. So chances are they could possibly have got up and moved, but um, not too sure. So he's going to check that area. Um, but what I did this morning was I thought, let the bush decide what we are going to see today. <laughs> and, um, and what we'll do is uh, just drive around, see if we get any fresh tracks of anything, predators or herbivores, and, um, and see what we can find. Now, um, while I'm driving around, as I said, Tristan is also out and he would like to say good afternoon to you. Good afternoon everybody and welcome to our sunset safari on this chilly winter's day. The sun is shining but it's quite cold and there's a cold wind blowing and some ominous clouds around as well. Now hopefully they won't bring rain. As Byron mentioned my name is Tristan and on camera today I have Craig aka Batman with his bat camera that has been decorated by Ferg with little white eyes and little bat pointy ears so we'll try and show you guys that a little bit later but our plan for this afternoon, as Byron mentioned, is to try and see if we can't find these Inkahumas. I know when Byron left them this morning, they were still moving, and the day we've had has been a blustery, cool one, and therefore it means that there could be signs of the Inkahumas moving, and we're going to try and see if we can't find them quite early on in the afternoon. Now, this is a live interactive experience, so for all you new viewers, remember you can get hold of us on hashtag Safari Live on Twitter, and for our older viewers that have watched many times, or even if you are quite experienced and haven't watched many times, Times, you can also send through any questions or any comments or if you just want to say hello you can do so also on hashtag safari life right enough about that and enough waffling on let's try and see if we can't concentrate and find some animals and birds and wonderful things that will be lurking out in the bush today I'm got a good feeling about this afternoon I think we're going to find something very cool that's what I have a which is really quite ridiculous and I'm quite sickened by the thought of how many times they've seen them but well hopefully our patience will be rewarded and we will get our pangolin of our own this side, which is I think a perfect day to do so so let's see how it goes right now 
that a grasshopper just flew into the back of my head. I think that's a sign that I'm just talking too much nonsense and therefore let's send you all the way across to the Masai Mara to Jamie who speaks far less nonsense than I do. Hello and welcome to the vast open spaces of the Mara. So all the way from South Africa with Tristan to the Mara. I hear that they're looking for the Inkuhumas there. We're also going to be looking for lions. I don't know which lions. I'm going to say probably the Angama Pride, but who knows what the afternoon has in store. My name is Jamie and this afternoon the trooper Senzor is on camera with me and I'll explain to you why exactly Senzor is a trooper because we had a very, very interesting evening last night, which is why the Mara team has been so incredibly absent. I just look back at the zebras for a second. I'm just going to say hello to the passing vehicle. Cool. Jumbo. It's my new favorite word. Jumbo. It's got such a lovely ring to it, don't you think? Right, Alice, have I got time to tell the thrilling tale of our afternoon last night, afternoon or day yesterday, that stretched well off into the sort of around about eight o'clock last night region? And then we shall go and see what all those cars are looking at, because I suspect it may be lions. seems so quiet this side with all of the zebra being all the zebra of the migration making their way slowly but surely in this direction and we've just got the resident ones here waiting Alice do I still have you here I do Right, we have the answer to that. I will tell you the thrilling tale of our day yesterday as the drive progresses. Perhaps we shall do it in, 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 in installments. While we do, sorry, I'm tired. While we do that, and while I marshal my thoughts, let's go over to Byron. Now, uh, we are sitting with some kudu, Jamie, that have just moved through here. And it's nice to have Jamie again on the Mara side. Uh, these could you blend in so well with the vegetation at the moment very very well camouflaged I've just seen a group of females with some young they, one just shot through the the frame there did you see that ran through very very quickly there it is so a few of them but look at that uh, there goes another one through the background <laughs> they're shooting through the frame there are quite a few of them around here I do actually see one big male. Now I'm going to see if we can get him on camera for you. I'm going to have to reposition the vehicle because he's ahead of us. Now he's straight through the bush over there. And it's quite difficult to see him. Let me move quickly and see if we can show you this big male with these beautiful spiral horns. Let's have a look. Let's have a look. There he goes, through there. That's strange, very shy antelope sometimes. Hold on a second, might get a bit of view through here. Um, they're all running in there. There goes the male. Right, so we've got this incredible track here that is really quite large and it's interesting because of just the sheer diameter of what we're looking at. If we have a look here, you can see from this side all the way across there is the width of this particular track and Byron I know this morning was talking about this and he was talking about how in winter it's not often that we see so many tracks but actually sometimes on days like today particularly when we've had a few warm days we'll find that snake tracks like this are actually quite common as the snakes are trying to find some sort of refuge to get out of the cold and they can 
perceive if there's going to be rain or if there's cold weather coming and they'll then move into areas where they can then actually try and sort of rest and make sure that they're safe but this is really quite amazing because just the sort of sheer size of whatever snake made this must have been massive now we were debating Craig and I as to what snake it could have been Craig's actually had quite a bit of experience with snakes he's filmed a couple of documentaries on snakes and so we were kind of chatting about which one we think it is now I don't think it's a python just given that if you have a look here you can see there's these big ridges of sand in the sort of S shape like this that is going through the sand and now a python generally won't move that way unless it is being chased or is under threat or is in some way nervous of what's going on this is a far more typical pattern for your faster moving snakes and particularly something like a mamba and given the sort of width of what we're looking at I would imagine mamba is probably our best bet as, as well as the fact that this snake must have been moving very fast and what it looks like happened is that it came down fairly slowly it then looks like it actually just sat around here you can see there's quite a big sort of patch that's all depressed and that has been flattened and there's not really too many ridges so I think it almost was sunning itself in this area and then it got a bit of a fright and it moved off at very very quick pace and the reason why we know it moved off very quickly is look at the height of this ridge if I put my finger down there you can actually see how much sand this snake pushed up as it moved so that gives us an idea that this snake was moving quickly it was not moving slowly at all when it moves slowly you'll get much shallower smaller little bumps like this where the body is pushed up against it now we can also tell what way the snake went just by these bumps because as traction is sort of works and how the snake propels itself it will use its muscles and push to the side and that will actually slide sand up and cause these banks so where you get the smoothing and then up onto the edge that will tell you that the snake was traveling in that direction as it pushed up against the sand and got some friction and then moved off into the bush itself but whichever snake this was it's a really incredible specimen and I would actually love to see this particular snake hopefully we can find it I've been scanning the trees around us I don't see anything and given that it is still quite sort of sunny and bright I would imagine that the snake could potentially have moved off by now but we'll definitely have a little look out in the trees as we go if it's something like a mamba then you'll find that these sort of snakes often do go up into trees and if they're sunning themselves they will actually spend a bit of time on the tree warming up before then carrying on now I'm gonna carry on on my search for these lions and see if this Nkuma Park is still in the same place and while I do that let's go across to Byron who I believe has got one of the most graceful and largest antelope that we see here Uh, they are indeed, uh, Tristan. How did I miss them? Well done. That's very cool. At least we've managed to find them fairly easily. They've been lying right next to the jackalberry. Had we just looked a little bit further north, we would have seen them. And luckily one stood up, I think, which is what's helped us to be able to find them. Now it's going to be interesting to see how many females and cubs are here because I had a look at some of the footage from this morning and I see that Amber Eyes was with them this morning. So I don't know if she's maybe just not with the little cub at the moment. Hello guys. So good to see the Nkuma Pride again. Yes, you're all sleepy, aren't you? You can see they're all just kind of sprawled out, which is typical lion fashion at this stage. They're all kind of found themselves a shady spot and are having a good nap. And you'll see the heads, even though they're up now, it's just because we've driven in here. Once we settle down, so the eyes start to get heavy and then the heads will flop back down and I'm pretty sure that it's going to be a very sort of sedate start to the afternoon with the lions. I don't think they're going to be too active just yet. They're going to wait until that sun dips a little bit with these clouds rolling in and this wind blowing. It's going to be a perfect night for the Inkahuma Pride to hunt. So this is very, very cool that we've found them now and we haven't had to search too much and it means hopefully that this evening when we sort of sit with them and, and just be a bit patient that they may be going to get up and start hunting. They are looking quite thin which means that they would in all likelihood probably try and see if they can't go hunting tonight. And you can see there that belly is sucked in a little bit and so there is a bit of well, nutrients needed on behalf of all of them so I wouldn't be surprised if we see a very active Inkuhuma pride a little bit later in the day. But for now you can see it's all systems go for a good nap 
you can, they've just flopped back down again to have a bit of a rest and like I said it's so good to see them they seem to just grow every time I see them the last time I saw them was about three weeks ago and even the little ones are looking as though they've gotten bigger already their legs are getting long and they're starting to lose those spots they're not nearly as spotty as what they were a few months ago now, that particular one that's lying out there looks like potentially one of the younger ones it's difficult now to sort of age them unless they're standing up because they're no longer sort of massive size differences between the three different litters and there is the sort of younger ones that are slightly smaller but unless they're lying with the others it's tough to know who is who and have to start learning the whisker patterns on all of them so that we can start recognizing which individual is which there's definitely no sign of the little cub here so maybe that little cub is hidden somewhere in these areas and because the pride came into this area amber eyes joined up with them during the night and maybe she's left them during the day today because at the moment i can only see three adult females i don't see any more than that but there are a lot that are lying on the other side of that tall grass you can see in the middle there is a big pile of lions and they're all kind of resting on top of one of each one another so inside there even though you don't see them, there's a whole bunch. And it just shows you how well camouflaged they are. So Francis, you're wondering how old they are. Well, there's three different litters of cubs here. So there was two litters that were born in May last year and one litter born in June. So the one set, the one set well, is 13 months. And Let's see if we can see them just through there. They might... Uh, now, Erica, you asked how large are the kudu in relation to moose. Now, I've never seen a moose, um, but my understanding is that a kudu, um, or a moose rather, is much larger than a kudu. Now, a kudu is a large antelope, but, um, but I understand that moose are much bigger. And I think, if I'm not mistaken, I think a big moose can be twice the size of a kudu easily. Um, Fergus, have you ever seen moose? Never seen a moose. <laughs> no. So, um, uh, so I'm not sure, Erica. But from my understanding, moose are massive and much, much larger than uh, than uh, the kudu. We'll see if anyone else can. I think uh, well, the best best I can do is I can give you the weight of a kudu. Now, I think a kudu can get up to about the about 200 220 kilograms let's just see what the book says let me see if i'm close let's double check myself here could um okay so they say big males can get up to 250 kilograms so, okay 220 250 i was close um but um so call it between the females, the females can only will only grow up to about 160 kilograms or so, 160, 170 for a big female, and the males right up to 240 or 250. So, um, if we can find out, if anyone can give me an idea of the weight of a moose, then we can give you more or less a comparison as to how big the moose are compared to the kudu. But I'm almost certain, I think they're about twice the size of a of a kudu. Let's see, it's interesting. Dutch Orca Art, you say that uh, moose are huge. Yes, they are. Um, so uh, so they, are, they are much larger, much, much larger. I wonder if they're not closer to the size of an, of an earlunt, maybe. Now, an earlunt is our largest antelope that we get in Africa. Um, now let me see, we don't really see them in this part of Kruger, they do occur in Kruger in certain areas. I'll show you a picture of one quickly. Um, huge, huge antelope. They are about the size of, just to give you an idea, an earlunt is about the size of a buffalo. Um, sometimes even bigger. Now look at that. That is a big earlunt. Over there really really big earlunt and um, yeah so they say that these earlunt can get up to um, about 700 kilograms or even up to 900 kilograms almost a ton uh, 
Aha, uh-huh. and Debbie in Vancouver, all the way in Canada, very far from where we are. You wanted to know how big the kudu was compared to the Irland. Well, there we go, Debbie. So the Irland uh, is seven, eight hundred kilograms, sometimes more than a buffalo. So to give you an idea, that's almost four kudu for one Irland, uh, one big male Irland. Very, very large. And let's see, there's, I think there's some other, I've got some other information, I just want to see if there's anything else on the ear in the, and there's another book, ah, <laughs> see, so just to give you an idea, I mean, yeah, you can see these ear get these very big dewlaps. Um, down the, the front, the big males get these very big dewlaps, big sections of skin and muscle forming around the, the chest area, very large. As in this book you can also see it. And the other reason I'm showing you the picture in this book, do you see that? And that's a very big earline too. And have a look at the photographer, that's why I'm showing you the bo- this book. <laughs> <laughs> so that's uh, an Irland I saw in the Kalahari actually, which we um, which um, we do see a lot of them out there. Not as many out in this area, but they do occur. They do occur in the Greater Kruger area. Um, but very very large antelope, and it's amazing to think that those antelope can get uh, as big as as buffalo, if not larger. Now we um, my vehicle seems to be falling apart here. Wendy. Wendy seems to be falling apart on me here. Um, now I've seen lions feeding on, on Irland. Some of you might be thinking what predators would be able to take down large prey like that. Now I've seen lions feeding on Irland, but um, um, the uh, it, it's not always that easy, but I've, it looks like a war zone once the lions have hunted in Irland because we've tracked or we've seen the tracks what's happened the yellant has managed to drag those lines while those lines are hanging on trying to pull it down the yellants drag them you've seen the scuff marks the lines trying to pull down the yellant there's some impala oh an impala with a broken horn half half a horn sean <laughs> hey folks not quite one horn half a half a horn sean <laughs> A little bachelor herd, just three males. Now, Ali, you were asking about some of this brown grass. We had a similar question the other day about the the vegetation and if there is still nutrition in the vegetation when it does go dry like this. So these impala, you can see they are still feeding on some of this grass and they will still get nutrients from it. But they will be a bit more selective now as we move into winter. So the brown grass will lose a bit of its nutrients. Won't be as nutritious as, as it is in summer when it's green. But there will still be nutrients in there for, for a lot of the animals, especially the bulk feeders. So the zebra buffalo, elephant, animals that feed on a lot of vegetation. They will still get nutrients from this brown grass, um, but not as much, obviously, as they would in summer. But you can see these impala are still feeding on some of it. Um, But the impala, what makes them so successful, is they are mixed feeders. So they'll be able to browse as well as graze. So the browsing is the feeding off the leaves of the trees, and and the grazing is feeding off the grass. So there will still be a bit of nutrients in this in this brown grass alley. Not not too much, not as much as it would be in summer, but there's still enough for the animals. Still a lot of food around, which is great, and we're very thankful for that because of all that wonderful rain that we had during our summer and the late rains that we got just to hopefully get us through the winter. Uh, no, it seems like... Tristan is nodding off with the lions too, so maybe we should go and check up on him and see how he's doing. (laughs) 
Well, no, we're not nodding off. We're actually enjoying ourselves, Byron. It's very pleasant sitting with the lions. It's quiet. There's a bit of a breeze blowing. And it's all quite wonderful. Now, I've repositioned and come around to the other side of the tree where some of the lions were kind of stacked in. And this lioness that you see lying right next to us is Amber Eyes herself. So that's her there. You can see she's got those big, broad shoulders. And she opened her eyes just now and looked at us. And that's why I know it is Amber Eyes. So that's who that is. Now, the other lionesses, I can only count another three. So I don't see a fifth lioness here at this stage. It's not to say that she isn't. In this long grass, she could be lying somewhere close by and we can't see her. But that's definitely only four lionesses, adult lionesses, that I can see at the moment. There's one lioness at the back, which is the one with the blind eye. So not that one, the one on the right here, Craig. You might not be able to see her. But she's just popped her head up on the right hand side. Maybe you can see her. There she is at the back. So there's the adult lioness with the blind right eye. And I wonder what happened to that eye. She definitely didn't used to have it like that. And you can see the biting flies are in full force. They're causing much discomfort to a lot of the lionesses and even the cubs. And she's going to go back to sleep. So that's her. And then we've got the two others lying on the left here. In fact, is there three? No, it's just the two others. There's the cubs are inside there. So there is one lioness missing. Now I wonder, and I, I know Amber Eyes was the female that was picking up that cub and moving it around, but it will be interesting to see if the youngest Inkuma female is here, because you wonder if maybe on, it wasn't her cubs, and because it would have been a first-time mom, maybe Amber Eyes was just interested and went and picked it up. It's difficult to say. I'm not sure if we actually saw her suckling, or the little cub suckling from Amber Eyes, so it would be interesting to know actually which one is which. There will, should be definite suckle marks from such a small cub like that. It's going to be needing milk, and so we should be seeing suckle marks on whichever female is the adult that is well that gave birth to her. So it would, it would make a lot of sense to me if it was the young female that gave birth just to the one cub it often does happen when it's the first time litter for a lioness she will just have the one or sometimes two and then as she gets older and, and gets gets used to this so she then starts to produce more it's the same in leopards you often find the first and the, well, the first few and the last few litters tend to be small numbers of cubs so there is another vehicle joining us and we're going to just quickly try and direct them so that they can get into the right position to be able to see them because it's not that easy they're all kind of clumped up into a into a sort of treed area and it's very difficult to actually get a nice visual on any of them we're lucky that we have a camera that zooms in very very far and that allows us to be able to see quite well they are definitely still very sleepy there's really no sign of waking up just yet they kind of popped their head up just now and then they all just fell back asleep quite quickly and you can see the cubs are flat 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 but they'll take their cues from the adult females as soon as the adult females decide to start moving and if they wake up they pop their heads up then we'll see a situation where the rest will start following particularly the cubs you can see that one lioness is just watching so Aaron you're wondering if I have any favorite memories of the Inkohumas and well yes I've got quite a few sort of very good memories of these guys and I've had sightings of them hunting buffalo a few times in particular on Simambili open near the dam they often used to hunt the buffalo there and there was one sighting in particular where they chased a buffalo across through the lodge and they ended up having lions running through the lodge it was quite something um, so that was a pretty incredible experience and then once watched them also have an incredible standoff with hyenas now when we were sort of we, had, we got up in the morning and there was the sounds of lions roaring and it was quite faint it didn't sound as though there was they were that far away and we followed up followed up and we couldn't find anything and eventually we came across the Inkahuma pride on a buffalo kill and then the hyenas started to mount and this buffalo kill was far it was all the way on the elephant plain Simomili cut line and the hyenas started to arrive and one by one hyenas came and eventually it got to the point where there was about 10 or 11 hyenas there and most of the pride at that stage then decided no they needed water and it was when it was dry and so the pride then moved all the way to Simobili which was probably about I would say a kilometer from where they had actually killed this buffalo so it was a long sort of stretch that they went for water and they left the one young male by himself this was a few months or a few years ago not a few years ago about a year ago and 
and it's just the young Inkuma male by himself defending this buffalo carcass from these 10 or 11 hyenas and there was then that the hyenas decided no it's time to now come in and try and chase these Inkumas and they came in and there was this big altercation that took place and that then attracted more hyenas and slowly but surely the hyena numbers built up and eventually it got to the point where we had almost well we had 28 I think it was or 29 hyenas all together and that poor Nkoma male got chased and the noise of all of that then attracted the pride that came running back from the water and we had absolute pandemonium as lionesses charged in chased and pushed away these hyenas and this sort of noise then attracted another pride of lions which was the Shimungwe pride and they came in as well and next thing the hyenas just absolutely smashed everybody they chased all the Nkohumas up into Marula trees the Shimungwe's were up in Marula trees and at one point I think there was about nine lions in five different marula trees spread around this open area it was quite something to watch so that was one of the most insane things I've ever seen and slowly one by one the, the Inkumas then dropped down and moved away and left the buffalo for the hyenas and the hyenas successfully stole the kill so that was probably one of the most memorable sightings that I've had it wasn't a positive one for the Inkumas but it most definitely was a very very memorable one indeed now like I say, the Nkumas still sleeping. There are a few vehicles that might want to come in. So what we might do is leave them and come back a little bit later when it does start to get a bit cooler and darker. And while we do that, I believe Byron has got his binoculars out and is searching and searching high and low. I am indeed. Oh, got a lot of sun there. Don't worry, please. It's okay. Thanks. Uh, um, now... I just heard, um, well we heard, a pearl spotted owl. I'm trying to find it for you, but it sounded like it came from this thick tree to my right and I don't know if we will be able to find it. Let's let's try quickly, let's try for a few minutes, come on. Uh, patience pays off and looking very very carefully. There is a pearl spotted owl somewhere here. This tree is also very thick and we know how small that owl is. So it would be, I think it's going to be very tricky to, to find it. There's a crested barbet busy calling now. He's just stopped. Come on, where are you? Hmm. I think I might be a bit optimistic trying to look in this thick tree for a pearl spotted owl but you never know you never know could potentially find it let's just have a look around it sounded like it came from here but I could also be wrong it could also have been one of these trees just around here we had a martial eagle fly over we're gonna try find that it flew in that direction so we'll have a look around there too but let's just try for this owl everyone because it would be wonderful to see it. I just want to see if we can coax him out a little bit. That's my best uh, pill spotted owl call. Give us your best pearl spotted owl face. <laughs> best pearl spotted owl face, <laughs> as requested by Fergus. <laughs> Thanks for that, Fergus. <laughs> um, I must admit, I'm having quite a fun afternoon already. We've had a lot of kudu activity. Um, I did see leopard tracks, again, um, of what looks like a young female leopard. Um, unfortunately they've just crossed our southern boundary that you can see there they've headed over in that direction but I want to hang around here who knows maybe this leopard has decided to come back this side or move around this area so maybe we still have some luck uh, Ali you were hoping to see some spots well we'll try our best we'll try our best we'll see and I'm hoping to see little spots from the pool spotted owl but I don't think this. Hang on. Hang on. Listen. Can you hear him? 
He is in there. Oh, okay. Now, well, now, all he has done is he's definitely just uh, raised the bar with the competition slightly. Now he's really got me set on finding him. Now, let's see. Come on, it's somewhere in here. I'm going. I might just try from the other side there quickly because I've looked this side very carefully maybe sitting on the other side this is exciting I, oh, <laughs> I hope you're all excited too I'm trying to find a pearl spotted owl because it's they're difficult to find they're tiny owls about the size of your hand so I do want to try and find it Let's have a look here quickly from this angle. I will be very impressed if we do find it because these little owls are very secretive and they can hide incredibly well in thick little trees. Hmm moving harder than I thought. Fergs, have you got anything yet? No, they are much not yet. <laughs> now, Kristen, you asked if the pearl spotted owl is the smallest bird of prey here. Um, the, the, the other little one is the scops owl, which is slightly smaller in the pool spotted owl, slightly slightly smaller um, so th that that one too, now I'm just trying to think we get another little bird we don't see it here though but um, in other parts of South Africa called the uh, it's it's called the uh, pygmy falcon it's a tiny tiny little bird of prey tiny little falcon that we do get um, in other parts of South Africa hold on, there, there he is there he is, I got him uh, there he is! Okay. Yeah, I knew it. There he flies. You see? You got him first? Did you see him? Where is he? Where is he? So, the uh, top of the... Let me point to you. Have you got him there? He just flew up to that branch. You got him there? There he is. Look there, everyone. Our pearl spotted owl. Well done, Fergs. Found him. You see? I knew it. Look at that. Hiding from us. Look at that beautiful owl. Wasn't that worth it? <laughs> yeah see those beautiful little spots that lovely little face those yellow eyes ah that's wonderful a little pearl spotted owl I think he just winked at us mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, it's so lovely to see an owl during the day these little birds birds of prey they do um, they, they are quite active during the day too, mostly at night though. But they will also potentially try and hunt little little lizards and that during the day. I'm trying to think what else the pool spotted owl feeds on. H A, you say the pool spotted owl is your favourite um, little owl in this part of the world. Well, that's great news. I'm glad we got to show you one. Now, um, the food, yeah, insects, lizards, or some small rodents, obviously at night that they try and try and catch. Even little bats. Can you believe that? They'll feed on little bats, little snakes. So quite a wide variety of food. Now, I'm just getting back to that other question about the birds of prey that we have here and the small birds of prey. I do think this, um, these little owls are the smallest in this area. Um, um, oh, you see now sometimes I get so stumped with some of these questions I don't think carefully 
Um, but I know the pygmy falcon is smaller, is definitely smaller than this little owl. But like I said, we don't get it in this area. Um, I'm trying to think of some of the other little falcons, the kestrels. They're all a bit bigger than, than the pool spotted owl. Um, so I suppose technically, um, bird of prey, this is probably one of the smallest. But as I said, the little scops owl is slightly smaller Oh wait, the lions have just got up and they're moving. Let's go have a look. Right, so the lions have just gotten up and started running because the impalas are going crazy right here. I wonder if there's not maybe a leopard or another lioness somewhere close by. But all the lions you can see are up and moving. So they've heard these impalas alarm calling and they know that something is afoot. So everybody is up and walking. Now I can only see four lionesses and then the six cubs that are here. So we're going to try and keep up with them. But the impalas just went crazy out of nowhere. So it seems like they definitely have seen something. Now I just want to let somebody know on the radio that's right there. Abel, Abel, Abel. Abel, you got those Impala's alarm calling. These uh, Ingala up and moving now straight towards the Impala's alarm calling on the fire break. You can see the lionesses are trotting down the road. So I'm going to just try and see if I can't get up with them. So I'm sure, I wonder if there's not a leopard here somewhere that has just caused a bit of a ruckus. I trying to see where the impalas are but you can see the two lionesses here where are the impalas now there's another lioness off to my right now the problem is is that they're going right to the boundary so I hope they're not going to cross the boundary now that let's see they're trotting they've seen something you can see here they're busy running off to my side there the impalas are running look the impalas are running right here so the impalas are shouting just on our northern side here. Let's see what happens. Now the lions are more interested in where the impalas are alarming, not at actually hunting the impalas themselves. But the problem is, is this is going to take them over the boundary and into the other side. But let's just see, maybe we get lucky. There the lions are running up. I wonder if there's not a leopard here. One of the lionesses running. So the impalas are alarming further north of us, and the lionesses are all running in there to go and check what's happening. What they know is that sometimes, if there's a leopard that's around, it could have caught an impala, and that's going to then cause them to be able to go and rob that leopard and be able to find it. So, look, you can see the lionesses moving. There's another one coming across the road now. So there we go. See, she's following the alarm calls. But there's definitely another predator here. The lion, the impalas went crazy all of a sudden. And you can hear them. They're still alarm calling to our north. I wonder what's going on now. Unfortunately, I can't go any further to investigate. But I'm sure that there, if there's not another lion, that there is a leopard here. Impalas don't go crazy like this for anything but lions and leopard. And here come the rest of the lionesses. So that's four lionesses that have gone over. And I'm sure the cubs are going to start coming now. What I'm hoping though is that the cubs decide to stay behind and to sleep on the southern side here. And these lionesses go and investigate. And if they find nothing, that they come back to their cubs and that we can stay with them. But it's definitely, they're busy chasing more impalas up at the top there. All I can see is lions moving through the bush. And you can actually see the Inkuma females. I'm going to roll forward a little bit. I don't know if you can still see them through there, Craig. You can just see the backs of their ears. They're actually approaching with quite a lot of caution because at the end of the day, they don't know. Maybe there's another pride of lions here and they've got to be quite careful. You 
can see them. They're all looking around and they're being nervous. We also know that the Tortured Pride does head into this area sometimes. So that's also why they're approaching with a bit of caution. Now Abel, who is with us just now, he's going to go in and try and just see if he can't find out what's going on. I can see the Cubs have all laid down to my right. They're far in the distance back where we left the Pride originally, which is good news for us because if the females don't find anything, they're then going to come back to where we are. But isn't that amazing? It just goes to show you that on days like this where you've got weather like this and wind that's blowing and sort of gusting it's often good just to sit tight with animals because there can be activity at any situation or any time and so it's worth just being a bit patient but those impalas are in alarm calling just a bit too far for us to be able to see that's the last line is just disappearing towards the back end there the impalas also sound like they're calming down a bit so maybe whatever is around has moved on slightly and like I say I'm hoping what's going to happen is that these adult lionesses are going to come back and come back towards their cubs and then settle down again but there's definitely another predator around here which is very very cool ah leopard behind us there we go <laughs> Now what's going to be interesting is to see how the leopard behaves when it, if it walks in towards the cubs. Just trying to see where it is. Craig, if you see it, let me know. There it is. It's busy running away from us. I can't see which leopard it is. So I'm going to try to just quickly get in here. But it is moving quite quickly. It looks like it could be a female leopard. I'm just trying to get through a big... Oh, come on. Wrong gear. <laughs> this is what happens. It all goes so crazy that you end up losing your mind a little bit. And it's just all happening. Isn't this amazing? Lions and leopard together. Oh, can't we get more lucky? This is amazing. I can't see where it's gone from here. Craig, can you see anything? The last I saw was it ran into this direction here on the right hand side. But it ran, oh, I don't know where it's gone from here. Just trying to see if there's any tracks crossing the road. But I don't see anything. I would have thought this leopard would have tried to maybe find a higher ground sort of advantage to be able to see what's going on. Now it's difficult because the grass here is so perfect for a leopard just to camouflage. As soon as that leopard lies down, it's going to blend in very, very easily. It's also going to be very nervous because it's just bumped into a whole bunch of lions and I have no idea who it was. It looked like a young female, oh, I mean a female leopard, could have been a young male. I don't know, it was just too quick to be able to see what it was. But at the last I saw it was running through this little area here must have crossed the road just trying to see right I'm just trying to see if there's any sign of it here just behind this tree no I don't see anything Craig you see anything no it's definitely gone over the road right so while we try and calm this all down to a panic and see if we can't find this leopard let's go back to byron who's still with his nice and sedate owl <laughs> i've still got this owl tristan he's moved from one uh, one tree to another and he's now out in the open it sounds like you've got a lot of excitement going on on that side with the lions I hope you find out what got them stirred up like that and very interesting and it just shows you that Tristan was spot on by deciding to stay there with those lions even though they looked like they were fast asleep and resting you never know 
and again you know patience pays off in the bush I think and um, I'm so glad that he got to see all this activity and get this excitement uh, I am very I'm still very excited because we found this little owl and now it's just posing beautifully for us out in the sun so we can have a really good view of it every now and then it turns its head and you'll see on the back of the head it's got two very prominent markings which appear to be eyes it might be a protective measure um, to pr obviously stop other birds of prey trying to hunt it so these eyes in the back of its head <laughs> James, you asked about the territories of these pearl spotted owlets and how large the territory is. James, I have no idea. Listen to him, hang on. He's getting that whistle. Watch, it might get louder. Very low whistle at the moment. Just a. Look at him. He's getting louder. I just hear him. There we go. Oh, look at that. No, he's really going for it. Let's listen. He didn't give the whistle at the end. Just the build up and usually they end with that whistle that <whistles> He didn't feel like doing that. Um, James getting back to your question of the, the territory of the owlet. I have no idea. I do know they are territorial and they um but I I mean I have no idea. Let me try and see quickly if there's anything written about the territory of the owl. I wonder if anyone's decided to study that. Um, let me see here. Pull spotted owl. Um, identification, confusing species, voice, distribution. Movements, kind of thing. No. Um, I don't see any. No, James, I'm sorry, I don't seem to find anything. And this. Um, this app that I've got is very comprehensive, a lot of information about birds and that, but nothing on the tree, I'm, I'm not too sure. I wonder if, if it's ever been documented or tried to work it out. I think it's very difficult, James. I don't think it would be a, an easy thing to work out the size of the territory of these birds because um, you'd have to ring it, you'd have to measure it. I, how far do they, t I don't know. I don't know if you could do it, actually. Anyway, wonderful, wonderful sighting. I think we're going to move on now from our beautiful pearl spotted owl and uh, and see what see what else we can find. We've been lucky so far. We've found some interesting little things and some nice kudu sightings and um, and that pearl spotted owl. That's made my afternoon definitely. Now this is exactly where I just saw those leopard tracks crossing our southern boundary so I was hoping that a leopard might appear but unfortunately nothing now speaking about leopards let's go back to Tristan and get an update and I wonder if he's worked out what got those lions so excited well Byron we know what got the lions so excited we, there was a leopard that shot past us at a rate of knots and it I mean, it's such a brief glimpse of it, but it looked like an adult female to me. That's what I imagine it was. But it was so fast to to try and give any sort of idea of who it was or whether or not it's a relaxed individual is... Oh, it's it's no chance. It just literally was running across the road and across the fire. And so I just came into the bush just to check in case it maybe was a relaxed individual and we would be able to get some sort of view of it. But it seems like it's not an individual at all and that it's just run to try and get out. 
up here, so I was hoping that maybe there would be some sort of sign of it, but there's nothing at this stage. Now it begs that question and one has to kind of venture into it, could it be Karula? Imagine if that was the case. Imagine if there was, out of nowhere, the Inkahuma Pride had found Karula and she'd come bursting out of Manya, I mean Biffleshook, back into Juma. It's definitely very interesting, certainly to try to do a lot of sort of loops around in the hope that maybe, just maybe, we pick up a sign of this leopard. You never know, maybe it pops out around Gallagher's shortcut or somewhere, in, even around where Telecap. I would imagine after it's run in with the lions, this leopard is going to be highly move, mobile and move as quick as possible into a thicket area to get away from this as much as possible. So it's going to be interesting just to see where it pops out. And so if Byron is looking for leopards, I would suggest he focuses his efforts on Gallego shortcuts. Now I'm sorry that we've got bad audio. Let's go across to Byron while I see if I can't fix it. All right, well Tristan tries to fix his audio. I've just stopped in this little spot here now just to search. We had a Marshall Eagle fly over us earlier. Now I'm just searching the tops of the trees just to see if um, if we can find him anywhere. I don't see anything just yet. So that's exciting. So it was it was indeed a leopard that uh, that uh, got those lions riled up. I hope Tristan manages to find that leopard again. I'm not sure if it was north of the boundary or, or if it was still on our side on Vuyatela. Um, but that is exciting. That's very exciting. I hope that leopard hangs around. Maybe Tristan has some luck in finding it. Well, it sounds like the audio might be a bit better with Tristan. I think you should tell him that he should show us the leopard and not tell us about it. <laughs> Byron, I'm trying my level best to show you the leopard, but the leopard decided his other ideas and is not interested in us at all right now. And I suppose I would be the same if I had four adult lionesses on my tail as well. I don't think I'd be sticking around very much either. So I think our leopardess has decided to depart. It could also be a young male, of course. It might not just be a leopardess. It could be a young male. And that's why it's moved off and gone into this thicket and we probably not going to know who it was but interesting nonetheless and certainly I'm going to go and sit back with the cubs now and I'm going to listen and hopefully we'll get maybe some alarm calls of another animal that will alert us to where this leopard might be and we can then go and find it but like I say if Byron's around and he's looking for cats he might as well come and try and focus his efforts in this area and see if maybe just maybe he bumps into that leopard around Gallagher's shortcut or Aubrey's or somewhere in those areas because that's where that leopard is heading but how exciting wow that was quite something. From sleepy, sort of tainted lions that were just really not doing very much to absolute pandemonium and chaos in all of about two seconds. Feel as though it just all erupted there. Now the last time we saw that little leopard was just here in front here and I'm just trying to check now if there's any footprint whatsoever that's crossed into the side because I lost sight of her as soon as we kind of got up onto that hill I just saw her running and then I just lost her and I don't know if she just went down into the bush or if she decided to cross it's also not the easiest place to look but I'll tell you what if I was a leopard I'd also be out of here very very quickly no no more sign but let's go and sit with the cubs for a while and just see So, darling, you want to know what leopard territory we're in right now? Well, none that I know of. This would have been Karula's territory. This is, I don't know of any other female leopard up here. There might be a female that's been on Biffle's Hook, Southern Manuleti, that we don't know about, but I certainly don't know of any female leopard. It would be the first female leopard that I've seen up in this section, and I don't know, I mean, I've spoken to Jamie, I've spoken to Brent, spoken to all of them, and even I've spent a lot of time up this side, and there is no other females that I know of around here. So, it's sort of interesting to, to think about it, and interesting to to sort of wonder who this could be and whether or not 
there is another leopard that's lurking around you or like I say could the the sort of inevitable well not inevitable could the magical happen and it could be Karula wouldn't that be something if it was her coming back you can see our little cubbies are still just sitting waiting patiently hoping that moms have found the food that they're after so you can see they're all just lying down and you can see that sort of youth in them is and the visual cues that are given by the adults that allow these cubs to know what's going on they saw the moms getting up and they started to follow thinking that they were going to move they then saw the females go into stalk postures and they heard the impala's alarm call and that's when they all just sat down straight away and they let the females go now the females are nowhere to be seen i can't see any of the females anymore and yet these guys are just sitting patiently waiting once the females have decided what's going on you're going to hear them contact calling and either the cubs are going to go to the females or the females themselves are going to come back to their cubs but wow what a special sighting that was so Kirsten you want to know whether the lionesses would fight or if they would call the cubs back well in terms of sorry Greg my fault I'm in the way there um, in terms of fighting um, with the leopard well no not really because they wouldn't really fight if it got into that situation they would have killed that leopard very quickly but in terms of um, chasing the leopard yes and then they'll come back to the cubs and they'll call either they're going to call the cubs to where they are if they found a food item or they're going to come back and settle back with the cubs themselves now I believe all of you are hoping that that leopard is Karula well <laughs> wouldn't it be something if it was I I don't know if it would be just because of the behavior of that particular cat. Granted, there are lions around and it is nervous, but as soon as we turned and tried to follow it in the bush, that cat started to run. It was kind of trotting, but it wasn't really running too fast. But as soon as our wheels touched the grass, it then took off at a rate of knots. And so that tends to tell me that this is a leopard that is potentially very nervous and not used to us in any way whatsoever. So I would imagine that it's it's probably not Karula, but like I said, can we not wish and can we not hope? And wouldn't it be amazing if it was? Right, well, let's go back across to Byron because Byron has a, had a lot to say today and he seems to be the all-knowing wonder of the world. And so maybe he knows which leopard we've just seen. <laughs> Tristan, uh, you know me, Tristan. <laughs> I'm not sure which leopard it was, um, but what I'm going to try to do, so I'm going to head into that area, and let me actually see if I can get hold of Tristan quickly. Let me put my very professional game drive radio voice on. Let's see if I can get hold of him. I have a few other guides on the radio at the moment, so I'll try radio him shortly, um, and uh, just get an idea of where he thinks that leopard may have moved to. A, I think he mentioned down to Gallego shortcut, so I'm going to go and drive around there and see if we don't have some luck. Maybe that leopard pops out for us. Um, I think what I'll do is I'll check, I'll check the the one water hole in that area, in Gallego Pan, um, because maybe this leopard's decided to go for a drink. If it's headed in that direction, I'm not sure. It might have, might have also got quite a fright with those lions being around and probably trying to get out of that area as quickly as possible. So we'll see. Okay, sounds like everyone's off their radio. Let me get hold of Tristan. Tristan, Tristan for Byron. Okay, there we go, he's replied. Uh, Tristan, I'm just trying to work out which area you think I should go and check. Let's just see what he says. Okay, copy that. I'm going to head into that area and have a look around. Thank you. Tristan has said he has no idea he doesn't know what he's actually doing out here so we should just go and look ourselves <laughs> nah I'm only joking he says Tristan has said uh, more or less where we found the lions this morning she headed down in that direction so hopefully well she is headed south so that's good for us the chances of us then 
potentially finding her uh, are a bit better. So let's let's try. We'll see. We'll see. It would be very exciting. Maybe maybe it could be a cat day for us, eh, Fergus? We found the lions this morning. Maybe we can find a leopard this afternoon. <laughs> All right. Well, we're going to search for the leopard. Let's head back to Tristan. Don't tell him what I said, though. <laughs> uh, so now Byron's playing secret messages. It's fine, Byron. There's a thing called YouTube and a thing called periscope that I can go and find out later how to well, what you said and what has been spoken to me so I will get you a little bit later don't worry and hopefully Byron after we've now given him accurate directions will be a little bit more successful with his search for the spotted cats it seems that Craig here who has found everything this afternoon is going to have given Byron a one-up to be able to even try and be successful this afternoon but I really do hope Byron is successful and finds whichever leopard this was. Like I say, I mean, it, it looked like an adult female. It could have been a young male. It was just such a fast glimpse that I would be lying if I could make any positive ID on that whatsoever. It was a blur of spots and a white little fluffy tail that sort of went flying past us. And, and like I say, I mean, it could have been any leopard. But it's definitely not any of the big boys. There was no dewlap on that cat. So it's one, either a young male or a female. So hopefully Byron finds it. As you can see, the cubs are still looking longingly as though moms are going to provide some meal for them. You can see they're kind of staring into the distance and they're starting to think to get a little bit bored because every now and then there's a bit of a stretch and a bit of a sort of flick of the head and eyes are starting to close and I think at some point now they're going to actually fall asleep. I believe that the females themselves are them and I would imagine they are actually tracking that scent for the leopard so maybe they're coming back this way and I wouldn't be surprised if we see the females rejoining this group of youngsters fairly shortly and if not joining them at least calling for them that they then go but aren't I'm very 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 glad that the young ones decided to at least sleep here because it means that we get a little bit longer with the Nkuma pride and they're all now at least got their heads up and are a bit awake and so that makes life a lot better but what, wasn't that an amazing sort of set of circumstances? It's just, just unbelievable. It went from this sort of sedate, tranquil afternoon to just absolute chaos. And that's what the best thing is about this job and the best thing about living out here is you just never know what's going on. You never know for any second of the day what's going to happen, what's around any corner. And it can go from quiet and nothing around to just stuff everywhere. And it really is pretty insane. So... Maybe it's a good time now to make a one-word tweet as to what you all felt during that experience as to what was going on and how you felt during the sort of chase of the lions and the leopard pop out and all of what was going on. For me, it was just sheer excitement. It just seemed like everything was happening at once. So it was very, very cool indeed. And this is the best thing about following lions, is that you never know with lions. And being the apex predator, often they are the ones that will flush other predators. And, you know, a, a leopard, had its heard alarm calls, might have gone investigated, but would have moved away from lions. Whereas lions themselves will sort of actively go after even a leopard and cause quite a bit of a sort of stir. So it's very, very, very good to spend time with lions when they're hungry like this. And I know, I remember... It was about two years ago, it must have been 2015 or maybe it was 2016 when Brent spent countless hours with the Inkuma Pride and he was convinced that they were going to kill and hunt and eventually he got that hunt on live TV of the buffalo and I think it was Scott that was with him at the time but it was insane to watch and this is the same kind of situation. The Nkumas are at that stage. They're hungry and they're looking. And spending time with them now over the next few days, hopefully they'll stick around in this area and then hopefully we'll see quite a bit of action out of them like what we've just witnessed. Right, now the all-seeing eye, the wonder of the world, Biceps Byron is around looking for his leopard. So let's see how he's done and whether or not his sort of actions match his loudness. <laughs> uh, Tristan, you've got too much time on your hands, sir. <laughs> now, we are in this area 
that Tristan has recommended we check. So we're going to be checking very, very carefully here. Some nice drainage lines, nice thick areas, perfect for a leopard to hide away from lions. Let's see, let's see. Maybe we get lucky. That would be wonderful. And Jess, you asked if I think a leopard would um, um, ever attack a lion. Now, I don't, I don't think so. I think it's highly unlikely. Now, I'll tell you why I say that. The, you know, a leopard is a very powerful cat. And, and hang on a second. I just want to stop here because what I'm going to do is talk. But um, I want to listen as well a little bit if we don't have any, any little alarm calls maybe from a bird or something that might help us with the with the leopard um, now getting back to that question leopards leopards are very very powerful cats and I've seen footage of um, a single leopard uh, get attacked by a pride of lions and actually hold its ground manage to kind of fight off the lions and get away from them they are so powerful so fast and so agile they would never necessarily attack a lion now the reason for that is the only time predators would attack one another, it's mainly, mainly lions would attack other predators because it's competition. So they try and kill them or harm them, um, but or just to chase them away, but not for food. So leopards wouldn't try and hunt um, or attack a, a lion because for them, because leopards are solitary, they try to avoid confrontation with any other predators because if they get injured, they are unable to, to hunt for themselves. So that's why leopards would choose to rather avoid those predators and move away than actually go and attack them and risk injury in an actual fight with another another predator. So the chances of a leopard attacking lion are slim to none. I don't think it would ever happen. It's highly unlikely unless perhaps a female leopard was trying to defend her cub that was nearby then she might act aggressively and try and um, chase a lion away. But um, but again a lion is very big, very powerful so uh, it's it's not a battle that the leopard would like to get into. Anyway, so that's what I think. Um, I haven't heard anything yet. Uh, Valeria from LA, you say you've got anxiety, you're so worried for the leopard. No, and. Um, you shouldn't be. You shouldn't be. I know um, sometimes um, our emotions do kick in and we're a little bit nervous when these predators meet up with one another and chase one another. But I, I can tell you that it happens so often out here. So often. Now the leopard, if it really felt threatened, it would jump up into a tree and hide away from the lions. The lions wouldn't be able to get it. The fact that the leopard just decided to run off it just shows that it wasn't that um, that worried about the lions. It just moved away, moved out of the area. So there's absolutely nothing to worry about. Now, um, and and again, like I said, you know, that's it's this is nature. This is a, a completely natural environment. The predators interact with each other a lot. Um, I've seen uh, many many interactions between different predators. It does happen, but uh, we can't interfere. We just see what happens. And, and these predators also have means and ways of looking out for themselves and being very careful and avoiding confrontation with one another. But so that leopard is, I mean, it's guaranteed that it's safe and it's moved out of the area where those lions are. But now we just need to find it. So nothing to worry about, Valeria. Like I said, again, it's difficult at times, but we need to try and keep some of our emotions out of, um, um, or, or refrain from putting too much emotion or attaching too much emotion to these animals, because they are wild animals, and it is, but again, it is difficult, and it is, it's always wonderful to see the animals, and it is sad if you do see anything get hurt or injured. But the animals do look after themselves very well. I've seen leopards that have been injured in the past where we thought, oh no, this leopard's definitely going to die. And three weeks later, they fit and healthy and moving around again. And these animals, all predators especially, have an amazing ability to heal and recover from injuries very, very quickly and very well. So 
so we don't have to worry okay now I'm at this little spot now we trust and thought that these lions I mean the way the leopard may have headed to I'm checking the trees checking the drainage lines All right, now it sounds like those little lions have decided to get up and follow the females, perhaps. Let's go find out where Tristan is and where they're going. They are indeed. So the little cubs all of a sudden shot up and they're now running straight northwards. So I think moms have called them. You can see them running in front here. So they think possibly there's a sign of food. That's why they're running so quickly. And oh, there the moms are back as well. So we've got everyone back on this side, which is fantastic news. And look at this when they greet each other, how cool this is going to be. Look, there we go. Yes, are you happy to see mom? Yes, and she's looking at us. You can hear there's a bit of calling, and there they all are looking at one another. Isn't that beautiful? Listen to them. This is so cool. You know, lions often can be lazy animals and we don't see too much from them, but when they are active, there is just something unbelievable about being around them. Now, I'm going to just go forward because they're going to go greet the other lionesses that are just in front here. I can see them just lying just to the other side here. And so I'm pretty sure they're going to go greet them right there. I think they didn't even notice that the moms were actually lying right here. And then eventually one called and they came quickly to see what was going on still kind of trying to work out who exactly this oh look at that we've got greetings going on this is so cool and isn't that a, just a beautiful view is that not one of the best ways to spend the day you've got lines in the middle of the road big dark clouds orange light there is very few things in this world that is better than a view like that that's as good as it gets and a big ball of lions that is busy cuddling with one another you can check look at that there's so much bonding going on right now. You would swear they haven't seen this lioness in days, the way that they're busy rubbing their heads together. You can see that little one is actually trying to push for milk. So she's busy trying to sort of nudge the mother's tummy. Look, trying, trying to get milk out of her. You see that? So they're pushing up, trying to see. Look at the light on her as well. This is amazing. Oh, look at that. It's a ball of lions, everyone. <laughs> So, Rebecca, are you wondering if lions purr? Well, no, they don't. So, lions are not like cheetah and our domestic cats. They have a very different sort of voice box system, and that what allows them to roar. And so, the roar is different to purring, and that's what classifies them in part of the sort of the part um, the panthera family group. So, lions, tigers, leopards, and jaguars, because they can all produce roars. The purring cats are cheetahs, African wild cats, and then all the smaller domestic cats, caracals. Those are all part of the purring cats. But they make a lot of squeaks. I can tell you that much look at this this is spectacular oh bless you sure wow we're being spoiled everyone this is why the Inkohuma pride is such a firm favorite amongst all the guides here as well as all of a lot of you at home and you all love spending time with them because of all these incredible interactions that we get with them the sort of social element that the Inkohuma pride brings and the, the sort of movements and the, the amazing sightings that we've had means that we end up with just the most incredible visuals of lions when we're with them. They really are a special group of lions. Now I just need to tell Byron, because Byron's in the right area, but he's just going the wrong way. Byron, Byron, Byron. So Byron's just south of me at the moment. There's the other females. They've now spotted the other females. That's why they're running into the bush. Byron, Byron, Byron. So Byron doesn't want to talk to me. So he who says that I need to pay attention is now not paying attention himself, even though I'm trying to call him. Yeah, Byron, you need to head west from where you are, so that uh, leopard crossed west of where you are and where you see us um, heading in a southerly direction so sorry guys I'm just in the way oh 
and a big jump just across the culvert there and up they're going now eventually we're going to get them right here the rest of the pride is lying all just on the other side well have they've gotten up to move no there they all are so we just see them through that gap over there Craig do you want me to go forward a bit I think maybe forward might be better let's try forward and just see what we get it's not that much better but is better nonetheless now the females are getting a bit upset because the cubs are all trying to suckle they're so hungry at the moment that they're wanting to suckle from their mothers and so they're causing a little bit of distress amongst the females because they're all over them and nudging them and i think the females are getting a little bit irritable by what's going on the good thing is though is maybe just maybe you never know this leopard might move and alarm calls might start and that might trigger the lioness just to come back again you can see they're facing that direction look they're looking in the way we just came from and it's possible that they might have heard something again and i wouldn't be surprised if we see these lionesses moving back towards where those that leopard crossed you know, craig do you want me to go back a bit i'm just going to go back so if you see the picture moving i do apologize it's just that there's going to be a better view right there look at that you see they're looking over their shoulder they're watching So Paul, you're asking if I get the chance, will I check for suckle marks on Amber and the young female? Well, yes, I most certainly will. I'm trying to look. I can't see anything at this stage. And to be honest, the grass is so long. I think we're going to battle to see actually if there are any suckle marks. The chance was when they were all on the road. And I actually got so caught up with the little cubs that I forgot to check, to be honest with you. So that is a bit naughty of me. I do apologize. But I certainly will try and look. And if I get a view of them, I definitely will try and sort of see if I can't find some sort of suckle marks on any of them that are there but to be honest there was nothing blatantly obvious when i was watching them kind of cross the road but then again amber eyes wasn't crossing the road now she was one of the first that got up and ran towards these alarm calls when the alarm calls first started in fact she was the first lioness to start running in this direction which does not surprise me in any way whatsoever amber eyes always is the one that gets involved it was her and the female with the blind eye that were leading the charge followed by this lioness that you see here and then the fourth one that just moved away from us at the moment but isn't this cute them grooming themselves now i do apologize about the few branches in the way but unfortunately they are now on the northern side of the boundary and so this is as far as i can go and i'm trying to find the best little gap that i can but they're just lying behind a little combretum there and so we're going to have to just have a few branches in the way but that's okay it's still very pleasant to be with the lions themselves So Susie, you're asking why do some of the cubs look like they're spotted? Well, the coats of lions when they are born are spotted, even though they're not referred to as spotted cats like lion and leopard, I mean like leopard and cheetah, they actually do have spots of their own. And so it's not uncommon to see spots. And even on the adults, you'll find spots on their legs. Sometimes you can see a little bit on their belly as well. And those will fade with age. Now girls don't go that way. No, that's the wrong way. But I think that's the last we're going to see. Now let's see if there's suckle marks there. No, those are not fresh. Those are from previous female. No. So it looks like... Difficult to see. I can't see which lioness it is. Hopefully it'll turn and look at us and I can see if it's not amber eyes. But it is a bit of swelling there. But it could be residual from these cubs that we've had. I think we're going to, this is the last we're going to see, unfortunately, of the Nkumas this afternoon. Once these two get up, that's going to be the end of that. They're going to go. There's a dam straight north of us here, not far at all. Maybe I would say about 200 meters, and that's where I think they're going to head. But let's stay with them for as long as we can. I see that they've laid down some of them now as well. Nope, onward and forward they're going. see how those black tips to the ears really work well when they're trying to see one another from behind it really does contrast very very clearly against the white grass oh, there's a little cub getting some mom time getting a good grooming uh, 
So Debbie all the way from Vancouver, you want to know, you all, you say that young leopards will hunt when they're left alone and we know this because we've seen Hassan and Shungile doing it and you want to know whether the young lions would do the same. Well most definitely if there was a monitor lizard or a tortoise or any sort of small animal that came towards the cubs they would definitely chase and try and get it. It's all part of their nature. There's an instinct that kicks in with these young animals that they must chase. They've also they've watched the females. They saw what happened now and they saw how the females went after prey species and so they had the same sort of side of it and they tried their best to try and um, get towards there and so they would have learned a valuable lesson and would have tried to see if they can't um, catch things so they definitely will hunt right well we're gonna stay with them for as long as we can whether or not they're going to stay with us is anyone's guess and so while we do that I believe Byron is racing through the bush to get somewhere I'm not quite sure No, not really racing through the bush, Tristan, but we're just trying to check this area very carefully to see if we can't find any sign of that leopard that you saw. Um, but I do think it would have got a fright from those lions and moved straight through some very dense, thick bush. Oh, there's a beautiful bird that we haven't seen. Ah, oh, please sit there. Don't move. It hasn't moved. <laughs> that was a little black collared barbet that just flew off over there. I'll show you a photo of it. Oh. Yeah, that was such a nice view of it. Typical birds, they don't want to hang around for us. Let me just quickly show you the barbet, the black collared barbet. Beautiful, beautiful bird. That was what we saw. See that beautiful red face with that black collar around the neck. So that's what, what it was. Unfortunately, it flew away. I haven't seen one on Safari Live yet. I've heard them a few times. I just haven't seen them. Now, interestingly about this bird, I just want to play the call for you quickly. Just listen to this. Hang on. Not that. That. Now, the interesting thing about that call is it's actually, it sounds like one bird doing it, but it's a duet. It's two birds doing that sound. Um, so it's always, they're often in pairs when they are calling. And that sound, which sounds like a single call. You can see, close. But it's, it's two birds, it's a duet. So one goes, and the other one goes, <laughs> something like <laughs> I wonder <laughs> Fergus do you think we could do the, the black collared duet yes. <laughs> <laughs> Carter right, and that's number 10 for your bird, bird list that's good so you're getting there you start ticking off some more birds We'll try to find you quite a few more species so that you can get your bird list up. Uh, there's some in Yala. Now, Project Arthur, you say that some of these birds do respond to playback calls. Keep your eyes open. They do indeed because they are a little bit territorial. And um, we try not to play the calls too long to disturb the birds. But um, um, because I have heard, and it, I mean it's a bit of a, um, a, a debate that's been going on for a while. If the birds get to, uh, quite agitated by the sound of another bird around, I'm sure they do to an extent. So we don't play it for very long um, so that we don't disturb the birds. And if they are nearby, if they do call it, no, if they do hear it. Look at these beautiful female in Yale. Lovely. Very close to camp now. I've come to have a look around Gallego Waterhole. Um, just to see if this leopard hasn't decided to come around here. Now, speaking of different antelope, um, um, Iodine 
from is it iodine from Illinois or iodine Eleanor? Um, okay, okay, iodine from Illinois. You asked about the sable antelope, and if we get them in this area. Now, iodine we do get them in the Greater Kruger. We do get sable. We don't really see them down in this um, in this area. They have occurred here in the past. Now this is quite interesting with the sable and. Um, and I'll explain this to you what years and years ago and it's I'm just gonna drive up a little bit I just want to check um, this water hole for any sign of this leopard if it's headed this way and we'll head around again and do another loop but I did um, so what happened was years ago there were sable in this area in the Sabi sands there were definitely sable but um, what happened was the um, no, I'm just trying to think. I've got to get my years right. I'll give you a bit of history about this area quickly. But um, um, in the early days of the start of the Sabi Sands, there was a fence right around it, which prevented animals from moving in and out of the Kruger, for example. So the sable used to occur in this area. Then the fences were put up, and the sable was still found around here. But what then happened was there was an increase of other animals. So they introduced some wildebeest, which uh, weren't necessarily found in this area at the time. They introduced a lot of wildebeest. Then the, in the population of impala increased because they couldn't move around as much. So then what happened was when the fences were dropped, um, the sable do not like, um, they do not like a, a lot of competition around water holes. So they don't like a lot of animals coming in and drinking and feeding on the vegetation around water holes especially. So what happened was the sable moved out of the area into other areas where there weren't as many um, antelope. So that's why we don't really see sable around here anymore. There are still occasionally sightings of sable right on the Kruger boundary with Mala Mala in Mala Mala. Um, I have heard that they still see sable now and then, and then in different parts of the Kruger, and especially up in the north, you can still see sable there. Um, but um, but unfortunately, this area, um, further in the Sabi Sands, I don't know when last a sable was seen, um, so I'm not sure. But that is why we don't have sable here anymore. Now, I'm going to leave these two Inyala on watch over here for us, so if they keep an eye out for a leopard and bark if they do see it that would be wonderful and big help well, we're not going to give up on that little leopard just yet uh, now let's head back to Tristan it sounds like the lions have moved off or he's lost them they've given him the slip let's see what his plan is now Well, I haven't found anything yet. We've just left them. We lost the last sort of visual of them about a minute ago. Just slowly sauntering off to the north. And so now I'm just coming slowly back down. Gallagher's shortcut, shortcut, shortcut to try and see if I can't find this leopard that was around. I'm just checking all the trees. Maybe this leopard after its encounter is going to decide to go up into a tree and just try and get up there for safety. So just slowly meandering my way along, trying to see if it doesn't pop out somewhere in this area now I know Herbie I actually now thinking about it and now that we've calmed down a little bit and everything's sort of settled Herbie has told me before that there is a unrelaxed female that does hang around in Buffel's Hook and sometimes up into this area so it could be that female that we saw and that's why she was so sort of skittish and just ran um, but I don't know the behavior just didn't seem like a very skittish leopard to start with it sort of kind of just walked over the road behind me and then got into the grass and it was moving fast but not at a ridiculous speed as though it had just seen us and was completely panicked by all of this but maybe when we started the car and went off-road it just kind of lost its nerve a little bit and ended up moving away from us but it is how it goes sometimes there are leopards that are a little bit shy so it could be that shy female like I say but I don't know why some part of me just wanted it to be Karula. I suppose we all 
some part of all of us wanted it to be her and whether or not it was her is anyone's guess if it is her i can tell you right now that in the next few days we'll find her because she's not that skittish and she's not going to be running away from us she'll be pretty happy to to be around and moving around here so if it is her there's no doubt that we will find out exactly who it is so it's going to be interesting to come check around here and i'm going to definitely do a few more loops in this area and particularly under the cover of darkness what you sometimes find is that a leopard that was a little bit nervous becomes a lot more relaxed and so you can sometimes get sightings of these leopards by just kind of finding them at night so we might get lucky and we might be able to still find her or him or whoever it was really like I say it's a mystery that needs to be s needs to be solved we certainly have checked this area quite a bit so I mean Byron's driving around I'm driving around and um, so if it does pop out onto a road between the two of us hopefully we'll be able to find it and it will pop out and we'll be able to see what's going on I was hoping that there'd be a few more antelope species around close by that could potentially make a noise if they saw this individual and I was also secretly hoping that if they did the lions would then come back towards us because I'm quite sad now that the school kids that are joining us just now are not going to get to see the lions because they disappeared and maybe not even the leopard either so I know that we didn't really see the leopard either but you know it would have been nice for them to have been in part of that and to have experienced that excitement we know how excitable kids can get and so it would have been really cool to have them with us for that whole situation. Right, now what I'm doing is apparently a mirror image of what Byron is doing. He's also driving down the road, so let's go across to him and see what pearls of wisdom he wants to impart on us this afternoon. <laughs> uh, just then, uh, pearls of wisdom. I suppose then we'll, we'll get back to Byron's tip of the day, those of you who missed it this morning. Um, so what I was saying this morning is, uh, is um, appreciating the, the smaller things while out on safari, stopping and looking at birds for example, or taking your time to find them, like these little Franklins running across the road now. There they go. Um, and taking your time to appreciate the smaller things it's not always just about racing from one sighting to the other because you're definitely going to miss out on so much out in the bush and often when you stop and you look at birds or you find other little creatures um, things will start happening around you and, and I think that is um, that is important so that's my tip of the day if you do come out in safari stop look look at uh, some of the birds and and if you do you might just find Tristan <laughs> uh, let me just move out the way for big boss man Tristan I'm glad you got all your technical issues fixed there well, or f for now for now good good well s We'll see you later, yeah. I see it looks like uh, it looked like uh, drone commander Connor was on there too. He's probably just giving them a hand with the um, with the technical issues. He's our technical genius, the young Connor Teagues. And I say young because I think I'm about I don't know eight years older than him or something. <laughs> I know it doesn't look like it, but uh, I'm about eight years older than Connor. <laughs> oh, 